Tonight, we will discuss states. When we open the Bible and read the story as it's given to us, we may think we are talking about people that lived, individuals, persons that, as we are. But it's not so. The characters depicted in the Bible are not the individuals named. They are simply states signified by those names. For instance, the name Moses, or the name Abraham, or the name, well, any name that you find in Scripture. They are not individuals, as you and I are. It's simply a state of consciousness through which the individual, you and I, the immortal being, we pass through these states. The word Moses means to be born. It's the old perfective of the Egyptian verb to be born. Abraham, the father of the multitudes. We start there, moving through states, and you and I pass through these states towards our own redemption. We come to the end, and that state is personified in Scripture, and men take the personification and worship it as a person, stick it on the wall, and then cross themselves before it and genuflate, not knowing that these are states. So we must learn to distinguish between states and the individuals who pass through these states. These states are eternal. They are forever. You are an immortal being. And you move through states. The states remain permanent forever. You pass on. We change states. The states do not change. We change states. But we, the individual, we are forever. It's like moving through a city. The city remains, but we pass on. To think that because we have left the city, that the city has ceased to exist would be stupid. The city remains, and we go on. We pass from one state to another state. And finally we come to the end. That end is described in Scripture as Jesus. But that's a state. You are the immortal being passing through states. And when you come to the very end, you are in that state. It was predetermined. It was shown all of us before we started. Shown us in the state called Abraham. We saw it all in detail. And if we entered it reluctantly or not, who knows? Paul tells us that we were made subject unto futility, not willingly, but by the will of him who subjected us in hope. And the hope was that we would obtain the glorious liberty of the sons of God. So, we were told that it was not altogether a willing subjection on our part. But we kept the divine vision, as Paul said, in time of trouble. And so we continue on the journey. In this world, you and I can create states. But the spiritual states are eternal. We create a state here. It's not eternal. We create a state to deliver individuals forevermore. I create a state, somebody asked me. Will you hear that I am, and they name what they would like to be. All right? So that I must create the state, knowing that he is now in a state that he dislikes. I must distinguish between the being and the state that he is in. So I see him unemployed. All right? So he's unemployed. And he wants to be gainfully employed. There's nothing wrong in that. So I represent him to myself 
as one who is gainfully employed, who has more than he's ever had before, to the degree that I am self-persuaded that he is what I have now imagined him to be, to that degree he will actually become it. I move him out of one state into another. But that state into which he fell remains for anyone to fall into it. And all can fall into it at the same time for that matter. He's not the only occupant of the state of being unemployed. There could be millions being unemployed. And there could be millions who desire to be out of it. Many who are unemployed have no desire to be out of it. They prefer to be on welfare. That's their desire. Perfectly all right. But if someone desires to be gainfully employed and to leave the state of being unemployed, you and I can create that state. Well, how do I create the state? By using my imagination. Imagination is not a state. It's the human existence himself. You are all imagination. And God is all imagination. You are God. And God is actually within you as your own wonderful human imagination. Now, these permanent states of the soul, these spiritual states, they remain. You and I pass through them towards our own redemption. But in the interval, we meet an, a friend, and the friend is in need of help. And the help is to move him out of the state. I can give him money, but as Peter said, Silver and gold have I not for thee, but such as I have, give I unto thee. And he creates a state and takes the man from being a beggar, who's always begging on the corner, and puts him into a state where he jumps up with joy. He's now employed, not begging for money. So he didn't give him coins. He simply gave him a new state of consciousness. So I take you as an individual. I represent you to myself as the one that you would like to be. The one that I, if I were in your state, would like to be. I make it fit within what is known as the golden rule. I do unto others as I would have them do unto me. If I were in that state, would I like to be in some better state? Certainly. For well, then, do it to another. And so if he asks it of you, you simply represent him to yourself as being gainfully employed, or if he is unwell, as being well, or if he is not, if he wants to be married and he can't find the proper mate, then you're, in your mind's eye you assume that he has found the proper mate. Whatever it is that is a normal, natural request that is not in conflict with your own moral, ethical code. And you create a state. This state, then you lift your individual into that state. Well, how do I do it? I carry on a conversation mentally with that friend from the basis that he is in that state. He tells me how happy he is with his new job and how much he is making. I see him in my mind's eye, radiant. Well then, am I self-persuaded that this imaginal act is a fact? Do I really believe in the reality of what I've done? Do I believe that imagining creates reality? I do. Well then, to the degree that I am self-persuaded, he becomes the embodiment of what I've imagined him to be. These are states. So man must distinguish between the individual and the state that he is in. So Blake said, I do not consider the just or the wicked to be in a supreme state, but to be every one of them, states of the sleep into which the soul may fall, in its deadly dreams of good and evil, when it left paradise following the serpent, the serpent of generation. So we came down to experience death, for this is the world of death, where everything appears, it waxes, it wanes, and it disappears. So everything dies in this world. No matter how long it seems to live, it dies eventually. So we come down into the world of death, and the last enemy to be destroyed or to be overcome is death. I enter death and then conquer death to prove that I cannot die. I am an immortal being, for I am all imagination. 